of you know that there are some things in your life that you need to change? Be honest. Raise your hand if you know there are some things that you need to change. Okay, great. So you ready? I'm going to do an exercise with you. Will you do it with me? Yes. By the way, I couldn't hear you. Will you do it with me? Yes. Excellent. This is a good group. No wonder the Patriots are like winning championships year after year. <laughs> so everybody stand up. And I want you to think for a minute. If you know that there are things in your life that you need to change that will improve your quality of life today and also the quality of life as you age, everybody close your eyes and I want you to think of three things that you already know you need to change as it relates to your health, your relationships, your environment, how you use your time, your work environment, your finances, your legacy and what you're leaving to yourself and your children and all those different things. So close your eyes and I want you to think of three things. And when I count to three, I want you to open your eyes and go meet a stranger, somebody that you never met before, and I want you to introduce yourself and say to them, I want you to verbalize it, I want you to communicate it and bring it to life right here, right now, and I want you to say, hi, my name is Eric Plasker, and the three changes I know I need to make are, and you say it, and then you listen to your partner, and then we'll sit down again. One, two, three, go. Here's the cool thing about this. If you know that there are things that you need to change, in fact, how many of you have known you need to change some of those things for at least a month? Raise your hand. Okay, good. How, about, how many of you know that you've needed to change it for like at least three months, right? Anybody for six months? Uh, anybody for a year? Anybody for a decade? Anybody for a decade? Right. <laughs> I got some bad news for you. You ready? It's not going away. See, the thing is, is if these are the things that you know that you need to change, and you know you've needed to change them for a really long time, it's probably not going away. And so the question then becomes is, is how do you begin to make the changes that you know that you need to make so that you can really begin not compromising your quality of life every day, but enjoying the quality of your life every day? And a lot of this commitment to change has to do with what you're going to choose as your motivating factor. Let me tell you what I mean by this, because you basically have two options of motivation. Your first option of motivation is going to be crisis motivation. So there are some of you out here that maybe it's going to be a crisis that gets you to make the changes that you know you need to make. Maybe it's going to be a heart attack and that's going to be the crisis. Maybe it's going to be a stroke and that's going to be the crisis. Maybe it's going to be a bankruptcy and that's going to be the crisis. Maybe it's going to be the divorce and that's going to be the crisis. Maybe it's going to be a sick relative and that's going to be the crisis. There are so many different things. Maybe it's going to be losing a job and that's going to be the crisis. See, the thing that you need to decide is what is going to be the thing that is your motivating factor. Is it going to be just crisis that motivates you to change? Like a lot of the nursing home generation, which by the way, have you ever heard the expression, if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Oh, yeah. yeah. This is the motto and the mantra of the nursing home generation. This generation that was blindsided by their longevity lived by the philosophy, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. See, the challenge is, though, is that they define broke as crippling or serious or life-threatening disease. That's how they define broke. See, the other option, the option for the 100-year lifestyle that I would love it if all of you would choose today and tonight and all of you would share with your family and friends and relatives and co-workers so that they could choose this also in their life is to now become motivated not by crisis but motivated by quality of life. By quality of life choices that give you the opportunity to enjoy your best life every single day. See, rather than waiting till your pants don't fit to be motivated to eat healthy, 
Eat healthy as a part of your lifestyle. See, watch what the 100 year lifestyle is really all about. It's, it's making the changes you know you need to make and then making those changes your new lifestyle. Because when you do that, there's no going back. Do you understand? There's no going back. It's like you close the door to all those destructive things that don't support you living your best life every day. And so which one is it going to be for you? Is it going to be your crisis motivator or is it going to be a quality of life motivator wanting to live in abundance, want to, wanting to experience balance with your family and your kids and your special someone in your life? Is it that you want to experience passion in your career? Is it that you want to keep yourself inspired and involved in your community by working in causes that you're passionate about, that you truly and really do believe in? Is it to have the health and the energy that gives you an opportunity to truly live your best life every single day?